Oh, I wonder what happens if we hairspray it. Hello everybody, uh, it's Barry, I hope you're well. Uh, I'm pretty tired today, I came back from London last night, the, got the red eye train home, it was my last few scenes of Ashens and the Polybius heist film, which I make a, a cameo in, very much enjoyed it. Uh, and whilst I was there on the train home last night, I was thinking, I wanna show you something, I felt a bit inspired. Not only when you are on a movie set, I mean, you need to guys, you know, you understand the world that I do of, you know, YouTube, I, I literally here on my own, there is no one else here other than, uh, well, the pugs today. It's very rustic, it's YouTube, and I think that's kind of what YouTube always is and should be, but it is getting more professional. That's fine, that's, that, that's just the way things go, right? But when I was on the movie set, it's just phenomenal. So many people working like ants really hard, and you're doing like one or two scenes in a day. It was really mind blowing. But one thing stood out from a food perspective. I got talking to like the arts and props director person of how they made certain things, like certain things, like the champagne I was holding wasn't actually champagne. And uh, I teased it quite recently in a video. I know lots of uh, home economists and food stylists, which is a very skilled profession. I know of a few things and I'm going to try them today. But if you want to see more, they've offered to come and do a video with me or me go to them and we can like, have some serious fun with this. But I want to show you an example. All right, so this is my first cookbook. It's still on Amazon, actually, if you fancy getting it, if you haven't already. And also my second book is on there as well. Uh, this is Bloody Mary Soup. It's actually my sexy Bloody Mary Soup. I nearly said it, blooming really gorgeous. Uh, it is a super delicious uh, tomato soup. I love it. But that soup on there was stone cold. A bit like the wrestler. And that picture doesn't do it justice. And actually this one, if you uh, turn to page 168, if you have the book, uh, Spice Squash and Coconut Soup. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of misty in the background. But that soup as well, with the herbs sat there, because if it was hot, the, the herbs there would just wilt. It was cold as well. So in the background, they've created some fake steam, or smoke, or whatever you want to call it. All right, so we've got two identical bowls here. If any food stylists are watching, I apologize, because this isn't gonna be the most sophisticated looking thing. So to make one of our bowls of soup steaming hot, we can take some cotton wool buds, bung them into a ramekin uh, and put some water on it. And shove that into the microwave. So just while that's warming up, the photographers that I know actually rave about something more better absorbent uh, than cotton wool. I'll let you lose your imagination, but it's in the, um, the ladies' hygiene aisle. But the cotton wool apparently is just as good. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my sexy lens quite a bit today, and I've just realized that the angle is not doing this justice to the size of the bowls of the soup I've got. So we're just gonna take it down to one bowl, okay? But now, with my oven glove on, because it's gonna be hot, I'm gonna put my cotton wool buds directly behind it. Here it is. So right behind it there, and hopefully, can you see that? <laughs> If I get some tongs and kind of like agitate it a little bit, look, you get some real smoke coming off. That is looking great. But other times they actually hide the cotton wool in with the food, like with noodles or something like that. So they tuck it away and it's coming up inside the bowl. This next one's so simple and it just makes so much sense. Well, particularly if you need white icing. Uh, with the summer coming up here, whenever I try and make cakes with buttercream, uh, the butter in particular, it's gonna be melting, you know? So how they get around that, is they use shaving foam. Okay, so here are some very basic chocolate cupcakes uh, from the supermarket. Actually a real good hack. If it's a kid's party, last minute thing, buy some of these, get some buttercream icing, stick it on top, your kid's party's all right. But by doing shaving foam on top, it should give you that icing hold. I don't know, I've never done it so the shape could go anywhere. I could even get a razor on it. But they also dye the shaving foam from time to time as well, just to make it look like any frosting you want. <laughs> what? I better shake it up. Oh, there you go. Oh, check that out, here you are. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's holding. It blooming stinks. But it kind of works. You can sort of see how not only do they look a bit like trolls, that that can resemble icing. Um, we can make it look a bit more icing-ish. Yeah, put some sprinkles on. I mean, look at that. Apart from this one, this is a bit wonky, but they're generally holding their shape and <laughs> you can see why they use this hack. 
It's got that delicate aftershave fragrance that the shaving foam has. So what I'm gonna do is put this to one side for the rest of this video and see if it does actually hold its shape before we're done. You ever see an advert for fruit like strawberries or apples and it looks really sort of shiny and glossy? Well, this is strawberries from the same punnet that I've washed and apparently by using hairspray, this actually gives it a gloss. You can also use deodorant. I've never done this. I don't, it's not something I do every day. In fact, I, don't, I haven't used hairspray in a long time. Ah, I smell like a hairdresser's. 24 hour ultra strong hold. Frizz control, color protection. Good. Ah, oh. can you see that? To be fair, <laughs> it's kind of like giving it a lacquer, hasn't it? That, that has worked. That's got a really sort of glossy, shiny effect to it. Almost like it's got a, a sugar coating on it or something. But that still looks fine to me. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I first sprayed it, see if it does it again, it kind of looked non-strawberry-ish. And then I think it began to dry. I don't know if it would do it again now with another coat on it. But you can actually see the difference there. That's, I guess that's cool. Not as tasty as these though. Okay, yep, there's no hairspray on that. Good. Actually, out of interest, here is an orange, or a tangerine. Oh. <laughs> I really wish I could rewind that now because I can totally see one of my kitchen lights in it. I don't know if that was there before. It was quite bland. Yeah, that's an orange from the same pack. So you can see the difference there. That has actually, yeah. It's all shiny. Watch me spray hairspray all on my fruit. Nice. You can tell I was kind of tired this morning in the supermarket because I, I do wander around sometimes in the days and I got two cakes and I only really need one because I can slice it in half. I'm going to show you how to pimp up a cake. So the other one, friend or family will have that. I'll send out the text in a minute and no doubt someone will be around very, very quick. Free cake! I get asked that a lot. What happens to your giant foods and your other stuff where you've got leftover ingredients? If we don't eat it as a family, I have many, many volunteers that are willing to take food off my hands. Okay, so this is just a generic, uh, actually quite small store-bought Victoria sandwich. If you want a really decent Victoria sandwich recipe, check out the website if you're not there already. But look what they're promoting there. Look at that cake there, how thick it is. The buttercream and the jam, but boom. You see this? You see, I couldn't see in, this, in the shop this morning, but that, that's a really good example. We're gonna pimp this up. Okay, so actually now that we've sliced into it, it's not, it's actually a lot better. It's actually a lot better. Damn it. Actually, I'm just gonna use these two wedges of cake as a comparison. So imagine it's sort of sat like this, okay? There's your cake, there's your cake. I'm gonna take the filling out of one of these. Do -do -do. Okay, and that should come away fairly easy, okay? So now, you compare that with that, and <laughs> that looks pretty pants, doesn't it? But with a little bit of cardboard, you see this is the thick stuff where it's got ridges like that, you know? See the thick stuff? Oh. oh, you see that? So what I'm gonna get is four lots of these, almost like wafers. I've actually got enough for five. I don't know actually, I think five is gonna be way too much. I think four, even that, but we're, we're gonna go extreme. These are some toothpicks. Oops, <laughs> these are some toothpicks. And what you do is one at a time, thread it through like that. All right, so in comes the cake again. Uh, we take it apart and we stick. Can you see the cocktail stick there? I'm pushing it in just enough. So it's gonna sit on the cake and we lift the other half onto it. So the, there we go, it just grabs it. Now, we have given ourselves a massive platform for our cake now. So all I'm doing is just putting jam on the outer edge. Like food stylists, they normally have like really tiny implements, tweezers and all that stuff, sprays. They kind of got like a whole like bum bag full of stuff. This is basically a video audition for my uh, role as an assistant food stylist one day. <laughs> uh, look at that, huh? <laughs> now this is where a stylist would have some sort of like crazy syringe or something. Mm. I've got some Kreti Bokka icing and I'm gonna try and use this thing again. I'm getting so much use out of that. <laughs> Just gonna spoon a little bit of it in 
I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> no, it's not. Come on. Ah. Okay, I'm going to have to do it the intricate, delicate way where I'm just basically going to cover that cardboard with the frosting. All right. <laughs> there you go. That, with the icing covering up that cardboard, you can take your, your cake, which, like we said, compared to the box, that was much better than it looked on the outside. You can pimp up and have a big old fat wedge of cardboard cake. <laughs> Just looks a bit rubbish from the other side. <laughs> okay, I've got two more to go. This next one is an absolute stonker, all right? You've probably all seen it, the breakfast cereal advert with the milk. It just pours, but it's not milk. It's not just like someone's turned on the cold tap. Oh no, it's kind of a little thicker, a little glossier. That's because it's glue. Most of the time it is PVA glue. This box, it sums it up perfectly. Like, look, can you see? how the the spoon is resting in there the milk but it's almost like sat on a bed of milk in reality if it does that it will just sink it will not sit there i'm not sure visually how well this will look i'm gonna do my best first of all i'm gonna try and do a pour and then we'll actually just sit it and try and recreate this <laughs> all right so this is get a normal bowl and pour milk on like we would normally all right so i'm gonna get it into a jug and I'm gonna pour on like this, okay, ready? So a nice, even, steady stream. And as you can see, it sinks right to the bottom. It will do, right? Now the same jug, I'm gonna get my PVA glue in there. You can see the difference that already is making. I don't know why I'm putting glue in a mug, but PVA does wash out generally. I should be okay. Okay, bring this in and look. Look at the difference in that. You're pouring your milk on. And that is glossy, it's show look, it's sitting on top. I mean, you can make that look way better. That looks and feels so much nicer. It's just sort of sat there on top of like a bed of normal milk. And if I leave it, it'll be the world's strangest cereal arts and crafts project, kind of like a Banksy-esque thing. But let's try and recreate that. So the difference with this one is we actually construct it and the cereal will not go in first of all. So I'm gonna get something fairly compact that the glue can just sit on to almost bring it to the top. This is some plain flour and I have lots and lots of it. Actually, when I made the uh, giant bunny recently, there's actually a way to make a mold by doing something like this with corn flour because it gets really compact. And I suppose normal flour would be all right as well, but corn flour is just super fine and powdery. So you can just press whatever you want to mold in then pull it out and fill it with chocolate. We pour the glue on. All right, now that looks like a big old glossy bowl of milk. And this next bit is a whole new world to it. This is where, like, it's all about the placement. Now, I'm not gonna do that too much, but look how that is just sitting on top. You see some of these food stylists, in fact, Jamie Oliver's food stylist particularly. Oh, look, I don't even need to do anything. It's just gonna find its place. <laughs> but Jamie Oliver's food stylist, they just nail this. It looks so good. It looks rough, but awesome. I can't explain it. It just looks like a bowl of cereal. <laughs> oh, I wonder what happens if we hairspray it. I'll tell you what. That is, for me, I don't know if you can see it, that is making it glisten. Oh, wow. Mmm, <laughs> I just love breakfast cereal. <laughs> so my last one, pancakes. I've made a lot of pancakes here on the channel. A pancake stack. If only there was a way to make the syrup look more like syrup. The humble pancake stack. Two evenly sized stacked cold pancakes. Uh, we've got buttermilk and there's also some chocolate ones. Now, I would normally drench these in maple syrup and I think I might even add some hair sprayed strawberries. In fact, here is maple syrup going on. Ah, oh, it's slow, it's nice, it just does its thing. I, I, don't, I don't see a problem with that. But what you can start to see a little bit is there how it's soaking in to the pancake. You're getting a puddle around there. At the top, it's kind of almost run off it. And I think that's the purpose of doing this one. But before we do, let's uh, you know stick on a strawberry half, a standard non-hairsprayed strawberry half. So we've got food there. <laughs> now, now this one is, is, I was gonna put it in a jug. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna pour it straight from the container. This is 
engine oil. Apparently, engine oil is an excellent replacement <laughs> for golden syrup or maple syrup. Oh. Right, this is the reason I left this till last. I do not want the smell of this in my kitchen for very long at all. Here we go. <sighs> look! It does look a lot like syrup. Uh, is it on the back? Yes! And is it sitting there? I, I really, really, really want to eat it. It's not soaking into the pancake at the moment. You can see you've got that real glossy top still. Whereas that, yeah, that's just like a soaked in sponge now. It's like a trailesh cake. It's absorbed the milkiness in the trailesh cake. Free milk, it's very nice. That, I mean, I've, I've poured quite a lot on there. I'm gonna not do any more whatsoever. But that is staying glossy. <coughs> and with a couple of hairsprayed tomatoes on there. Tomatoes, <laughs> strawberries. It's a funny looking tomato. There is actually a real big difference in that. Can you see the shine on those strawberries again? But also, you know, that looks sort of, I don't know, matte and sort of bland, but that has got that shiny reflection. It, 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 I, I really, really, really want to eat it. For a minute, it's quite hard to tell which one's reality, but I don't fancy eating engine oil today, and this will be just fine. And it is actually getting quite warm in here, but generally, the cupcakes, oh, apart from that one there, that really has fallen off quite a bit. They have held their shape. <laughs> it just stinks so much. The smell in here, the Mrs. Barry's like, what the hell have you been doing? Engine oil, hairspray, shaving foam? Yeah. I think for my sanity, I really need to make sure that I just don't eat any of this stuff right now. But this is a video I've wanted to do for like years and years. Uh, it just kind of fascinates me. You know, I walk the dogs, sometimes I walk past like fast food things and I actually start to study of how they took the picture or what they actually did. What is that? Is that actually food? You don't know. And maybe after watching this video, you might start to look at it too. If you did enjoy this and you want to see a follow-up or several follow-ups with a home economist or a food stylist, I'll get on the road and we'll do something more advanced. But I just wanted to show you that because I think it's pretty cool. So from my cotton wool soup, my oily pancakes, my fat wedge of cake, even my shaving foam cupcakes. I hope you've enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know any other videos down below you wanna see next and I'll see you next time. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. What's then? Yeah? You're mulling it over? No, not today, mate.